What do you call them? <clears throat> okay, she's calling. Um, whenever you are ready, yes, uh, we are, we are, we are live. So Brian, we, we got her on the phone. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so welcome to our uh, closing keynote address. Um, and I have the great pleasure of introducing the Honorable Caroline D. Pham, uh, to, uh, this final part of the second BAF Global Summit. Um, Caroline is the commissioner at, U at the U.S. Uh, Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Um, so obviously we'll have plenty to, uh, to talk about uh, the view from Washington. Um, so, Caroline, if you can hear me, over to you. Thank you. Good morning and afternoon to you all, and I really appreciate this invitation to speak. I'm pleased to share some thoughts with you about digital asset regulation. But first, I would like to offer my deepest condolences to all those who mourn the tragic loss of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and honor her life and legacy. I think we can all agree we are on the forward edge of great technological innovation for many enterprise, consumer, and financial applications. New technologies, particularly distributed ledger technology and blockchain, whether permissioned or permissionless, present opportunities and risks. They could present a future of potentially promising and untold advancement. DLT could change the essential nature of money, payments, and finance. In the present, Crypto markets recently have risen to and fallen from trillions of dollars in value. Non-bank financial intermediaries are playing larger and larger roles in financial markets. And all of this is against the backdrop of heightened global volatility, inflation fears, and geopolitical clashes. So this is what I'll talk about today. First, I'd like to identify fundamentals for responsible digital asset markets. Then, I'll outline a pragmatic approach to next steps. I'll go ahead and say now that these are my views and do not reflect those of the CFTC or any other commissioner. Some of you may not be familiar with the CFTC, so I'd like to tell you more about our agency. The CFTC already has a ready-made regulatory framework for many digital assets. We are a market regulator over commodity derivatives, futures, options, and swaps, and we oversee exchanges clearinghouses, dealers, and other market participants and market professionals. We oversee exchanges that list and trade crypto derivatives and clearinghouses that clear crypto derivatives. As you know, Congress is considering several crypto legislative proposals. It's very encouraging that Congress is undertaking such a comprehensive effort to create a clearer and more holistic regulatory framework around digital assets in the United States. It's not too late to inform international standards to minimize market fragmentation and partner with non-U.S. regulatory counterparts on global coordination and cooperation. That important work is urgent and ongoing. And indeed, the U.S. Treasury Department released the next in a series of reports under the President's executive order to create a whole-of-government approach to digital assets. I'm pleased to read these reports and to continue to see over the next month what the next steps will be under that. But in the meantime, I've got my own thoughts. As a critical mass continues to build with Congress, market participants, and public interest groups, I believe we'll see the benefit of having the CFTC's principles-based framework that is more flexible and more adaptable to new changes and new risks. While we are waiting on the efforts in Congress, as well as under the executive order, the CFTC has important tools in its toolbox. From my perspective, the SEC regulates the securities market, and the CFTC has regulatory touch points with virtually everything else. It's well known that the CFTC has strong anti-fraud and anti-manipulation enforcement authority over spot commodity markets, which we have used over and over. 
He successfully brought over 50 crypto enforcement actions since 2015 with hundreds of millions of dollars in penalties. The CFTC also has oversight over certain spot retail FX and spot retail leveraged commodity transactions. These could be good places to start while Congress thoughtfully works through tasking us with additional authority. So key takeaways are that the CFTC's regulatory framework is relatively asset and technology neutral. Our focus on principles-based regulation, customer protection, market integrity, risk management, price discovery, and transparency has worked well for our markets for decades through all manner of market volatility, market stresses, and other market dislocations. So coming back to digital assets and DLT, there's no question that it could change our financial markets. But there's also familiar and in some ways predictable risks that could impact consumers, investors, and business protection, financial stability and financial system integrity, combating and preventing crime and illicit finance, national security, the ability to exercise human rights, financial inclusion and equity, and of course, climate change and pollution. There are also the inevitable scammers and fraudsters. This is why I've proposed 10 fundamentals for responsible digital asset markets. These may sound familiar because this is a common sense approach. First, we need to identify the particular product or service. This means knowing whether a product is a security. It means knowing whether it is a novel native crypto asset or a traditional financial instrument cleverly rebranded but still subject to existing laws and regulations. These kinds of questions are being worked through here in the United States, as well as abroad in other jurisdictions and at the international standards setter level. Second, the product or service must be within the regulatory perimeter. If there are areas of the financial system that are apparently outside and unregulated, such as a shadow crypto financial system or shadow banking 3.0, then the appropriate response is to bring them inside. This is what the CFTC did in large part for the OTC swaps market after Dodd-Frank. And while Congress continues its work on developing legislation, there may be other ways as well to make sure the CFTC and others are exercising the full extent of their existing market oversight, supervisory, and enforcement authority. Indeed, in one of the reports that was released yesterday under the President's executive order, it encourages the regulatory authorities to continue using their existing powers to provide guidance, rules, and to work collaboratively. Third, we must mitigate systemic risk. We've seen disruption spread from the collapse of projects such as Terra and Luna to other crypto firms, revealing potentially undisclosed connections, exposures, and interdependence among large crypto participants that increases the risk of spread amongst and beyond crypto. We need to address this. Fourth, we must combat illicit finance and the national security risks. Our markets need to be safe from exploitative money laundering, cybercrime and ransomware, narcotics and human trafficking, and the financing of terrorism. Fifth, we must appropriately use activity-based and entity-based regulation. Market regulators oversee product activity and who engages in it. Prudential supervisors oversee entities and the activities they engage in. Same, but different. Sixth, we must protect customers and the retail public. There should be requirements for disclosure, suitability, and education at a minimum. People should know what they're getting into. Recent news reports about potential lack of protections in the event of bankruptcy for customers holding digital assets on platforms raise real concerns. Seventh, we must ensure transparency. DLT presents great opportunities in this regard for market data, but also we must have transparency into the different operations of these firms that are in the crypto sector. Eighth, we must vigorously enforce market conduct rules. If you are lying, cheating, or stealing, if you break the rules, then you should face the consequences. Ninth, we must address conflicts of interest. There should be requirements for appropriate governance and oversight prevention or management of conflicts of interest such as prohibition, disclosure, or information barriers. 
and alignment of incentives amongst market participants. And tenth, of course, as a U.S. government official, we must promote free markets that will unlock American innovation. I believe that markets work best when there are clear and simple rules with common standards. Regulation shouldn't unnecessarily increase operational complexity or cost, especially costs that then get passed down. And lack of regulatory coherence impedes the ability of regulated institutions who have the experience and the resources to actively participate in digital asset activities and responsible innovation. So here are the next steps for how we get to the right regulatory future. One, we need to get all the information we can. Here in the United States, SEC Commissioner Hester Person and I have called for joint CFTC-SEC public roundtables to evaluate recent crypto market events and risks and to discuss how to regulate crypto responsibly and with greater clarity. Globally, I am sponsoring the CFTC's Global Markets Advisory Committee, which is about having a level playing field and will focus on firms' global business strategy and operations and the markets that are needed to support growth and effective risk management. The GMAC is an international forum for executive leaders from both the public and private sectors to come together and create a shared vision for the future of markets. One potential subcommittee could be on digital asset markets. Two, we need to learn as much as we can. We should remember the hard-learned lessons from the financial crisis and Dodd-Frank and other G20 reforms. Let's be careful about big bang changes that could lead to market fragmentation and unintended consequences. Three, we need to find pragmatic solutions. We should start with what we have. I believe it's usually faster, easier, and more reliable to use what's existing and tried and true than to stand up something that's entirely new. When it comes to the CFTC, we have ready-made regulatory frameworks for derivatives markets that have stood the test of time. We have our core principles and business conduct standards, broad anti-fraud and anti-manipulation authority. And we should also harmonize the laws and rules we have. And I know firsthand from implementing global regulatory reforms that we need to coordinate across authorities and jurisdictions. We should work towards forward-looking laws and regulations. And from the beginning, we should aim for durable, flexible regulations and try to future-proof what we do. This is a proactive, not a reactive approach to regulation and oversight. And it will ensure that we continue to meet our mandate both today and in the future as technology and markets continue to evolve. In all of this, we should keep retail protections front of mind. It's clear from billions of dollars of losses by the retail public and the knock-on effect to the broader crypto market that regulators simply cannot fail to act any longer. Thank you. That was uh, Caroline Fan. Thank you very, very much. Really appreciate the uh, review from the CFTC in the United States. Uh, so that uh, that concludes our our final speaker, the second annual BAF uh, Member Summit. Um, again, thank you, Caroline. Uh, Professor Nassim, would you like to make some closing remarks? Um, yes, thank you. Oh, thank you very much to all participants, all members of Blockchain Associations Forum, keynote speakers, external speakers, um, all guest speakers uh, for your excellent contribution. Um, we will meet again, uh, hopefully, next year, sometime in September. And thank you again to Brian uh, and also to my colleague, Dr. Hussain. Uh, and uh, thank you for joining. The, the sessions, as we have discussed, the summary of the summit, the summit proceedings will be made available in the upcoming issue of the JBBA, which is going to print in October. And the session recordings will also be available on our YouTube channel um, in a few weeks' time. So thank you very much all for joining and um, uh, have, a, have a great weekend. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.